perpendicular bisectors. So our question says, for triangle ABC, where A is the point negative 2 and 2, B is the point 8 and 4, and C is the point 1 and 8, determine the equation of the perpendicular bisector through side AB. So before we talk about what a perpendicular bisector is, the first thing I'm going to do is plot points A, B, and C on my grid. So the point A is negative 2 and 2. So we're going to find negative 2 on the x-axis, positive 2 on the y-axis, and there's point A. B is 8 and 4, so I'm going to find 8 on the x-axis, 4 on the y-axis, and make my point. And then C is 1 and 8, so I'm going to find 1 on the x-axis and 8 on the y-axis. And then I'm going to take my ruler and just connect up those points to make a triangle. So a perpendicular bisector actually in the title tells you what it is. So perpendicular means 90 degree angle. So it's going to make a 90 degree angle with something. And bisector means cut in two. So something that cuts something in two would be the midpoint. So we're going to make something that goes through a midpoint at a 90 degree angle. So if we're going through side AB, that's AB right here, we're going to make a line that goes through the midpoint, so the halfway point, at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to start with the midpoint. So uh, one way to do that is to use a ruler. I can measure the length of the side and then find where the midpoint is. Uh, it looks here like mine is just about four centimeters. So half of that would be two, which is right there. That would be my midpoint. And a midpoint does cut your line into two equal pieces. So you can put tick marks there to show that they're even. And then, the 90 degree angle, if you have a protractor, you could measure a 90 degree angle, but a little trick of something you can do is you can use your ruler. So you can use the bottom edge of your ruler and have it sit against the line um, to roughly make a 90 degree angle and then draw it. Or you could try to find um, a line. So if I look here, you know, I have these lines that mark them. I could try to line one of these lines up with the line on here so I could do it part way through and try to get that line to line up on the bottom so that it goes through at a 90 degree angle. So there's my perpendicular bisector, right? It goes through the midpoint of my line and it's at roughly a 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna mark that little 90 degree marker there. And then what I wanna do, what the question is asking, is it wants me to find the equation of this line. So what we're going to do is use the GRASP method. Uh, so we're going to look at what's given, required, we're going to do some analysis to figure out what approach we should take to find it, uh, S for solution, and then present your answer in a sentence. So I'm going to start with G, so what's given. So in this question, it gave me three points, A, B, and C. So I know that A is negative 2 and 2, B is 8 and 4, and C is 1 and 8. So if I went through one of the corners, I would draw a box around it, but it doesn't actually pass through point C. It kind of just goes near point C, so I'm not going to circle anything here. Um, required. The question is asking for the equation of the perpendicular bisector through AB. So I'm going to say equation of perpendicular bisector. through AB. And then the analysis. This is the tricky part. This is the part where we are going to think 
about what we need to do, how we're going to find this line, what we would need to calculate to find the line. So I'm going to start by saying I need to find my final result is the equation of a line. So I want to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Is there a formula for finding the equation of a perpendicular bisector? Well, it's a line, so the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to write down the formula y equals mx plus b. I want this plan to be as specific as possible so that if I go back later, I can actually follow it to do my solution. So to use y equals mx plus b and write an equation, I really need to know the m, which is slope, and the b, which is the y-intercept. So somehow I'm going to have to find the slope. And somehow, I'm going to have to find the y-intercept. Now, to find slope, um, I can use the formula m equals delta y over delta x, so change in y over change in x. Or we could do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But in order to use either of those formulas, I have to know two points. And right now, the only point I really know is my midpoint. It doesn't pass through C, it doesn't pass through A, it doesn't pass through B, and I'm not going to try to guess another point there. So I actually only have one point, which means I can't use the slope formula to calculate the slope of this line with only one point. So there has to be another way to do it. And the secret is the perpendicular part. So when two lines, like the perpendicular bisector and AB, meet at a 90 degree angle, that means that their slopes are negative reciprocals. So because it's perpendicular, to find the slope of my perpendicular bisector, we can't calculate it directly because we don't have enough points, but we could find the slope of AB and then use the negative reciprocal to find the one for the perpendicular bisector. So what we're going to do for our slope is I'm going to do the negative reciprocal of the slope of AB. So I just used the notation M for slope, so we're going to do the negative reciprocal of the slope of AB. And if I'm going to do the negative reciprocal of the slope of AB, I guess that means I really need to find the slope of AB. How am I going to find the slope of AB? Is there a formula for that? Yes, we can either use that slope is delta y over delta x, change in y over change in x, or you could do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Whichever one you prefer is what you should use. So I prefer to do delta y over delta x, but if you like the formula, use the formula. So either way, whether we're doing delta y over delta x or whether we're doing the formula, we do need to have two points. So I need two points in order to be able to use that formula. So I'm just going to break it up here to point one and point two. Now we are trying to find the slope of a, b, right? So I want to find the slope of this line here. So the two points that I'm going to need would be point a and point b. So point one is going to be my point A, which is negative 2 and 2. And then point B is my second point, which is 8 and 4. So that takes care of the slope side, right? We've got a plan. We have a formula. We're going to do negative reciprocal. On the y-intercept side, to find y-intercept, we don't have a specific equation for that, but we do use y equals mx plus b, and then we rearrange. So to do y equals mx plus b, um, this time we are looking for b. So I do still need to know the slope, like we did for the other one. And excuse the interruption, but we're having a garage sale down in the office. For anybody who wants to come look at tents, air mattresses, uh, propane, stoves for the outdoors, uh, backpacks, anything. Uh, everything's free. They're going to dumpster at 11 o'clock. All right, sorry for that interruption. Uh, so we need to find the slope, which we will have calculated over here when we did the slope side. And then we need a point for the x and the y. So it does have to be a point 
that is on the perpendicular bisector. So a point on the perpendicular bisector would be the midpoint. It doesn't pass through C, it doesn't pass through A, it doesn't pass through B. The only point it passes through is point M. So we're going to need to use the midpoint of BC. Sorry, not BC, of AB, right? We want to find the midpoint of AB. My apologies. So to find midpoint, there is a formula. I can sort of see it looks to me like it is at the point 3 and 3, but just to be sure and just for practice, I am going to use the midpoint formula. So midpoint here is x1 plus x2 over 2, and then y1 plus y2 over 2. And they are points, so they are written in a bracket with a comma in between. And in order to find a midpoint, it does require two x's and two y's, which are going to come from two points. And those two points, we are doing the midpoint of A and B, are going to be point A and point B. So point A is negative 2 and 2, and point B is the point 8 and 4. So you'll notice when I look at my plan, we never use point C because my perpendicular bisector does not pass through C. So it really isn't going to help us at all. So now that we have our approach, our analysis, what we're going to do is actually try to calculate. So that's my S for solution. So first thing I need to find is I'm going to start with the slope. So I'm going to take my two points, negative 2 and 2, 8 and 4, and I'm going to find the differences. So to get from negative 2 to 8, I added 10. To get from 2 to 4, we added 2. So slope is delta y over delta x, which means that my slope is 2 over 10, which I can reduce by dividing by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the slope of AB is 1 over 5. So I now know that the slope of AB right here is 1 over 5. Okay. If we work our way back up, we are going to take the negative reciprocal of the slope of AB. So the negative reciprocal of 1 fifth should be negative 5 over 1 or just negative 5. And then that's my slope. So we've got this side taken care of. On this side, we need to still find the y-intercept. So I have to find the midpoint first, and then we'll do our y equals mx plus b to find the y-intercept. So we're going to do midpoint first. So the midpoint of AB is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So that we're using these points here. So this is going to be point 1, so x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to do negative 2 plus 8, and 2 plus 4. So negative 2 plus 8 is 6 over 2. 2 plus 4 is 6 over 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3. So the midpoint of AB is the point 3 and 3 which is what we saw on the graph. So I'm just going to mark on here that we came out with the point 3 and 3, which means the last thing I need to do is take the slope of negative 5 and take that point and put it into y equals mx plus b to find my y-intercept. So y equals mx plus b. So y3 equals m negative 5 times 3, which is my x plus b. So negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And then when I add that to the other side, I get that b is 18. So I now know that my b is 18, which means I now have my equation. I'm going to write it up here since I don't have any room anywhere else. For p, I'm going to present my solution and say, therefore, it is y equals negative 5 is my slope, x plus b, which is 18. So y equals negative 5x plus 18. And that is perpendicular bisectors.